I want that, that eight hour wear, man. I want that eight hour wear, and I don't get that eight hour wear. Hi there, my name is Lindsay. Welcome to my channel, The Affable Fox. I am really excited that you're here watching my video. Thank you very much for doing that. And so today, as you can see by the title, I am talking about impulse purchases that I made that I don't like. <laughs> Everybody's probably made an impulse purchase in their life. Well, at least I know I have. I'm thinking especially a lot of people that love makeup probably have just because it's so readily available. It's kind of a little bit everywhere, you know, in the grocery store, in the, in the CVS, in Walmart, in Target, you know, in the normal stores, Sephora, Ulta, Nordstrom, all of those. So it's really hard to not buy something that you probably didn't need at some point or something that you just kind of picked up like, oh, that looks good. And you grabbed it and <laughs> you paid for it and you walked away with it, which I've done many times and I'm often not very proud of that. But at the same time, you live and you learn. And it actually does help to figure out what you really don't like so you don't make those unintended purchases again. So today, these products that didn't work for me, I have some with me. I don't have all of them because some of them I've gifted to other people or I returned or something of that nature. And so I will show them right here on the screen. And I'll of course put all prices and places you can get them on the screen as well down below. So I'm gonna start off with a product and it's actually a high-end product that I have still and really wish I hadn't bought. This was actually probably when I ran when I was first really getting into makeup and really trying to learn the, you know, the basics. And this is when Marc Jacobs, his coconut line came out. So I think that was 2017. So his coconut line came out and this was part of it. This is the Undercover Perfecting Coconut uh, eye, ba eye Primer or Base. So, I don't like this. I have oily eyelids and I don't find this to be useful or, and you probably can't see it because it's nice and light skin colored for your eyelids. Um, obviously it's not going to work for everyone anyway. It, it's actually relatively sheer for an eye primer and it just, I think the coconut probably does it no justice on my eyelids because my eyelids can get really oily. So my eyelids get oily anyway, it doesn't matter the day, the, you know, the time, whatever. My eyelids will always get oily, but with this they get oily much faster and my eyeshadow creases much faster. So don't like it, don't like using it, don't really know what to do with it. Maybe I can find someone that would be interested in it. I don't know. But my oily eyelids, this does not work. So, unfortunately. The next item is going to be right here, somewhere on the screen. And that is the Sol de Janeiro Boom Boom Cream. Now I know this is very much loved throughout YouTube, Instagram, any name your social media platform. It is very much loved throughout those platforms. And I'm not here to say that I don't like it. I actually very much do like it. And I have a small travel size jar of it hidden away at my parents' house. And so my mom and I can kind of pull out of that when we want. But unfortunately for me, it was actually, I bought the full size as an impulse purchase. I was in Sephora one day and it had just come out and was getting popular. And so I was like, I'm gonna buy that. It sounds really nice. So, and by the way, I'm sorry, I'm looking here at my notes. I've got notes here about everything. So for that, I bought it, it was a nice big one. That I ended up actually returning. And again, let me, let me say, I don't dislike the product. I actually like the product. I find that it does make your skin look beautiful. I do find that it doesn't hydrate me as well as I'd like it to, but people do say it hydrates pretty well. And it does smell really good, but that's the problem for me. I have a wonderful, lovely husband that, and actually I have a father-in-law as well, 
that cannot stand overly scented things. So I can't really have candles burning in my house. I can't wear you know, a, a, an inordinate amount of perfume or at least very strong perfume. I can't use very strong smelling lotions. And unfortunately that's where the Boom Boom Cream went wrong in my house because the Boom Boom Cream is, I believe it was a pistachio caramel smell, if I recall correctly. And it smells lovely. It, to me, it smelled like cake batter. I loved it. I, I thought it was fantastic. But for my husband, it was like a headache in a jar. So I couldn't wear it without assaulting his senses. And so because of that, I had to return it. But then I got a boxy charm a couple months back and it had a small size. And when I whipped it out of my box, I was opening my box, my husband was there, I whipped it out of my box and he was like, why? Why would you do that? And I said, I didn't do it. So I took that to my parents' house. And so my mom and I use it every now and again, along with another one that it wasn't an impulse purchase, but I ended up not being able to wear it because again, it's too much uh, scent, which was the Pistache Skincare Body Butter, which also smells really good. It smells like pistachios. And I just, I can't wear it, it's too much for my husband. And my father-in-law, if he comes into contact with me, if like if he comes over to our house or what have you, it also, it's even worse on him. He can get really, really massive headaches very quickly. My husband can get headaches as well, but it takes a little longer. So that was the very sad story of the Sol de Janeiro Boom Boom Cream. So the next product is the Ule Henriksen Invigorating Night Transformation Gel. So I bought this hoping to try and get rid of clogged pores that I have around here. I consistently have small white heads that sit around the corners of my mouth, of my nose. They're always there, they never go away. And it drives me absolutely batty. And so unfortunately I was, I, I just, I have to live with them. And sometimes as you can see, you can probably see, I've got it covered, but I've had some angry, angry whiteheads that have decided to make my skin look terrible. So <laughs> those angry whiteheads or the little teeny tiny normal whiteheads that just sit there all day sometimes get irritated and inflamed and just pop to the surface and then everything goes down the crapper. So awesome. But beside the point, Ulla Henriksen. So the Invigorating Night Transformation Gel, I used about a quarter of a bottle of this before I was like, this isn't, this isn't doing anything for me. This, in fact, it's probably making it worse. Now, I know there is such a thing as purging where your skin tries to get used to something that you're adding to it. And especially with something like this, which is AHA based. So it's a clear gel that smells like vinegar. So it's a uh, it's, it's serum based gel. And so I was putting that on and I was just breaking out massively. It was terrible. I, it, was, it was bad. So I decided to just quit. Uh, I used it, the quarter bottle lasted me probably about a month and a half. And then I was like, this isn't getting better. It's getting worse. And it's been too long for this to be helpful. So I was like, I can't do it. So I ended up giving it to my mom. I actually don't recall if she's tried it yet or not. I don't think she has. So I'll have to get back to you and find out if she's tried it, what she thinks. Her skin's actually very dry, whereas mine's very oily. So, you know, hers might be a little different. Her uh, experience might be a little different with it. So I'll find out from her. But that was the Ulla Henriksen Invigorating Night Transformation Gel. And it was expensive, which was a bummer. And I bought it just on impulse one day because I was mad that I had white heads. Yeah. So the next thing I've actually, <laughs> yeah, I've bought this one a couple times and I don't know why I chose to buy it, return it and then buy it again. Maybe I was hoping that I didn't give it enough chance prior the first time I bought it and returned it. And the first time I bought it and returned it, it wasn't an impulse purchase. I actually went looking for it. And 
There are definitely some good things about it, but unfortunately for me, it breaks me out. I'm pretty sure there is something in there that makes my skin unhappy. It also clogs my pores. So that is the, and I know so many people love this, that is the IT CC Plus Your Skin But Better Color Correcting Cream. And I really wanted to like this. I did, like I said, I've bought it twice. This is my second time around purchase. I actually returned the first one. And I actually, the first one was in light. And actually, I do remember part of that. The first one was in light. This was before they actually went down to fair. So this one's in the shade fair. The first one was light and it was too dark on me, number one, and looked too yellow. And number two, it just, I, I remember it being not great with my skin. So I went out and bought it to try and give it another chance. And it, yeah, it didn't. <laughs> I don't know what's in this that clogs my pores, whether it's the physical sunscreen, it contains both titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, which is probably how it gets to the 50 plus level, or the snail secretion filtrate, or any number of the other 40 plus ingredients that are in this. There's a lot of ingredients in here, and a lot of them are silicones. So I don't know what, what's in here that does it, but I definitely, it, it inflames my whiteheads here. It gives me more whiteheads. And although I like the squeeze tube with the pump, I, I mean, I, I like this CC cream. I really do. It's actually a little on the yellow side, but because it's a CC cream, I don't know if you can see that, but because it's a CC cream, it really doesn't show up as too yellow on my skin. I want to like it, I do, but I, I can't live with clogged pores. I mean, I'm already living with it, but I can't live with additional clogged pores for no reason. So unfortunately, this will not work. And it actually, on top of that, just so you know, um, I had given a little small sample version of this to my mom to try because it's a little bit on the lighter end and my mom doesn't like heavy foundation. So I gave a, a little one for my mom to try and she said it actually clogged her pores as well. So apparently there's something in my family skin that doesn't like what's in here. So I don't know what it is, but I'm not gonna keep trying to figure it out. Sad. So the next two items, and I bought, yes, I bought two, and that was, again, a, not a great choice. I don't hate these and I do wear them. I'm actually wearing one of them today on my lips but they're so drying, they're so drying. And those are the NYX Lip Lingerie, and I have two different colors here. I believe I have, this one is Ruffle Trim, and this one is Seduction. So one's a little more of a brown tone, and One's a little bit more on the pinky side. I'm just not pleased with the very, very drying formula. It is a very drying formula. So, oops, okay. so this one, the darker one, is Seduction, and the lighter one, more pinky one, is Ruffle Trim. So they're very nice. They're very opaque. They do go on well. You, you know, it's more of a one swipe coverage. You don't have to keep applying and applying it. But just like every other massively over-drying liquid lipstick, I get a ring around my inner lip and it just, it's not attractive. And without a lip gloss, like I have a lip gloss over this today, it, it's just, it's too much. It's too much for me, I, I can't, I, I wear them because I don't want to not wear such pretty colors, but I really don't like the formula. This was not one of my better purchases. I kind of wish I hadn't purchased them, but I will keep wearing them. Even though they're drying, I just really, really exfoliate my lips a lot and put on a lot of my Laneige lip sleeping mask and hope for the best. So I want them to work, but they, they're not great. I got two more. I'm gonna go actually to the next lip product just so I can get, you know, do all the lip products at once. And that is the Dose of Colors Lip Gloss in Can You Not. So it looks just like the matte liquid lipstick that Dose of Colors does, except that the 
component is actually shiny instead of matte. So at least if you keep your stuff together, I kind of keep my lip glosses and my, and my liquid lipstick separate, but if you keep them together, that's an easy way to tell which one's a lip gloss and which one's the matte liquid lipstick. Um, so there were, I bought this online impulsively and I really like the Dose of Colors liquid lipsticks. I have two of them and I, I very much like them. This, however, and it, it's not an unusual opinion. I've actually seen a bunch of people on YouTube that don't really care for this lip gloss formula. And I'll tell you why I don't care for it. I find it to be an incredibly streaky formula. I actually have a really good alternative that I'll tell you about. But So that is the Dose of Colors liquid lip gloss in Can You Not. It's actually a nice color. It's very nude. Very, very nice nude color. A little bit on the brown side, but with a nice bit of pink under there too. But every time I've put it on my lips, it, it doesn't, it, there's holes. I, I end up with holes of color just all over my lips. It doesn't, it like, it decides where it wants to stick and it sticks there, or it decides not to stick there because it doesn't like that spot. And that's what I feel like with this lip gloss. I feel like it is choosy on where it likes to stick and it is sticky and it just isn't a very good lip gloss in my opinion. And it just, it's very opaque, yes, but because it's so opaque, because the formula is patchy, it looks awful, just just awful. So. I'm not a fan of this. I, use, I try and use it, and I'll keep trying to use it, but I'm not a fan of this. But I have actually got, and I wish I would gotten it out. Give me one second. So I've actually got a much better alternative. It's similar. It's also a very opaque uh, lip gloss. And that is the Vivid Hot Lacquer by Maybelline. And this one is in Charmer. So I really like this as an opaque lip gloss. It reminds me a lot of the Anastasia Beverly Hills lip glosses. It, it's almost got like a liquid lipstick feeling because it's not as sticky, but it is so opaque. I mean, look at, look at how opaque that is. And this compared to the Dose of Colors, this goes on basically, you know, one swipe, no patchiness, nothing. If you're looking for something like that, that's a little bit of an alternative. The formulas are, again, this is a lot less sticky, but the formula on this is great, opaque. I love it. This is so much 10 times better than that lip gloss, 10 times better. Definitely, if you like something like that, but you're having issues with it, this is a great, great option. So the final item, is the this is a travel size of the becca ever matte poreless priming perfector so I, I'll, I'll say it again i have oily skin and i wanted to find something that would mattify my skin i've been looking and looking for things that will mattify my skin and keep me uh, less oily all day because I by the end of the day I am so oily and my my forehead is an oil slick I'm shiny like overly shiny and not even dewy just overly shiny and I wanted to get I want it I want that that eight hour wear man I want that eight hour wear and I don't get that eight hour wear out of any of my foundations and I can't find out how to fix that so I tried this and I was ugh, this stuff is, you can see it, it's got like a little squeezy tube, a little almost like a like a one of those lip, you know, lip glosses. And you get a little bit out here. So it's it's very thick and it's very silicone-y. But really what and what I've read, you're supposed to pat it into your skin. So just patting it into your skin. So I've done that. I've patted it into my skin. I've rubbed it into my skin. I've done everything I can. This stuff, I don't know why, but especially around here, it will collect all the foundation. 
and it will look cakey and gross and just wrong. And even when I get it on my open forehead, it will do the same thing. It doesn't matter how I apply this. I've tried every trick in the book to apply this thing and it makes my foundation look horrible, horrible. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong or why, because I know some people just swear by this, but I hate it and I want it to work and it won't work and it just makes my foundation patchy and it makes me mad and why I bought it on impulse, I don't know. So it's unfortunate, if this doesn't work, it makes me mad and I'm gonna stop talking about it. But again, Becca Ever Matte Poreless Priming Perfector. So that's everything. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, please don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And if you have any products that you bought in, on Impulse that you don't like, that you said, gosh, why did I buy that? It's awful. It happens to the best of us. But leave it down in the comments. Let us know what do you like? What makes you angry? Like the Becca pore perfecting primer thingy that just makes me angry every time I see it. What makes you angry that you bought? I would love to know. Subscribe if you'd like to see more and I hope to see you again. Bye.